I fell in love with Shin Megami Tensei through playing Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse, and that is already a very controversial opinion since a lot of people have some very strong opinions about this game. But while I could and will spend some time talking about this game in the future, I wanted to talk about a game that I was introduced to some of the other mainline games, with one of them being Nocturne. I haven't gotten the chance to play it since I don't actually have a PlayStation 2, nor have I even bothered emulating it, but when I heard that a remaster was coming, I was very excited. So I waited until it came out, and I definitely got it on Switch because I want to play it everywhere, and today I would like to talk about my experience with it so far since I haven't finished it, but I've got a lot of thoughts on this remaster so far and I will be sharing my thoughts on the Nocturne Remaster for Switch. So, should you get it, let's go ahead and find right out. So I want to give you all a heads up that I did purchase the $70 edition in order to play this a few days earlier, but it also includes all of the DLC, so I might actually touch on that briefly. But also, I will only show footage from the early game to not spoil too much, also, my experiences here will come from the Switch version only, but there will be a full-on review video in the future once I'm done with it. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So what is Nocturne? So if you're new to Nocturne and were curious about the plot, here is how I would go ahead and describe that to you. The story is about the end of the world and the idea of it being rebuilt from the remains. Essentially, the world ends through an event known as the Conception, which takes place when God believes the world needs to be reset. It destroys everything and swallows a good chunk of the world along with it. You play as a nameless protagonist who was referred to as a demi-fiend, and you were one of the few survivors of this Conception. In fact, there were other very important people who survived alongside you because you were all in a specific hospital, which was the only place where people were safe from the conception. Now everyone is surrounded by demons and angels, who make up the vast majority of the population. But what would be the purpose of living in such a terrible world? Well, these survivors form their reasons for living in this world as they realize that they can gain the power to change it, and make it into what they believe is right. It's up to you the Demi-Fiend, had to decide whose reason is worth following to the very end to watch the world be rebuilt as they desire. And while others decide what the world should be like, it's up to you to decide what the new world will be like. And I find this concept to be very interesting, since I can confidently say that depending on how I carry myself throughout the game is how we will bring about a new world whether I want a new one with peace, or whether I want it to burn to the ground. So when it comes to improvements with this HD remaster, now this is originally a PlayStation 2 game that was released for the PlayStation 4, PC, and Nintendo Switch, so it is an HD remaster which came with, with some improvements. Now one of the most basic things that we always expect is a widescreen upgrade, and that's definitely there for the main gameplay, but not so much for every cutscene. Some do still use that 4x3 aspect ratio of CRT TVs, but more on that a little bit later. You also get to play at different soundtracks from different SMT games up, up to Apocalypse, but it only takes effect in the overworld from my experience. Also, you gain access to both DLC characters, Raido Kusunoha and Dante from the Double May Cry series. There's also a new Merciless mode that has been included for people who want to play through the story, since the game, even in its normal mode, can be quite unforgiving. You also get to carry this thing around with you if you have it on Switch, which is always an advantage. But besides that, it's mostly just a revamped port, I suppose. As for the fun factor, as someone who's new to this game, I do find it to be quite a lot of fun. This game does offer the HD experience of playing an older game. The combat system is great, as it is what other mainline SMT games have been modeled after, and that's the press combat system. Essentially, if you deal a critical hit or target an enemy's 
weakness, as then you do get an extra turn every time that you do so, but it only works once per character per turn. And so if you have a party of four, uh, you can double the amount of turns that you get if you play your cards right. But the same goes for your opponent as well, which makes the combat system interesting since there just isn't much room for error here, but it forces you to play smarter. When it comes to walking around and exploring, that part can actually be pretty fun, but also it can be pretty lame. I don't like the way that you traverse the overworld because it's just uninteresting. Sure, it means that it's easier to model the assets on screen rather than, than designing an entire Tokyo that needs to get traversed, but a lot of it is desert anyway, and you can encounter other souls in order to talk to, and you still have to deal with random encounters, which, by the way, I would consider to be pretty high, to the point where sometimes it's annoying, but when I'm trying to grind 40 XP, it's easy to notice that gathering experience is actually pretty tough. So grinding will take some time here, especially if you're trying to grind for your demons, since it takes a lot more to level them up versus the protagonist or the demi-fiend. But once you are in a city or a dungeon, everything is much different, as you're actually walking around and you can absorb the atmosphere almost no matter where you go. Every place looks run down and it shows off the, the destruction caused by the conception and the society that the demons have built around Tokyo. Though places like Ginta look almost intact from what happened since once upon you go in, it's all in such great condition, which is odd without a doubt. But I do enjoy the, the exploration while we're in full form altogether. The story is also really good so far, as it really feels like everything is over. There's a lot of hopelessness in the world, and the roaming souls in the world definitely reflect that sense that they all complain about their circumstances and how the demons will eat them. I especially love that every demon in this game has a personality of their own, and that's always one point I bring up when I try to sell people onto SMT. I love Persona and being able to use these demons and all, but encountering a god who only obeys himself and is willing to kill you at a moment's notice is very menacing and makes them feel just so much more alive. I do come across such demons like Loki, who is drinking at a bar and other mythical beings along the way. Lucifer is even the one that's guiding you through your journey, so you're very much at the mercy of these greater than life beings that truly live to their re reputations within the game. I would love uh, to touch more on this aspect with the full reveal, when that eventually comes out, that is. But I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about performance on the Nintendo Switch. Honestly, there is just one minor difference between the two that I've noticed, and it's that it gets less pixelated in docked mode if you're using an attack that looks big, or that adds any filters or anything like that. But while most of the time the frame rate is pretty good, I'm genuinely surprised that this game is so poorly optimized that the Switch couldn't even run it at 60fps and only at 30. Granted, it's like this for every port of this game, even on PC, which is a giant shame, but performance is mostly fine, minus some stutters with certain attacks and even during certain cutscenes where the frame rate drops to an absolute crawl, but this doesn't really happen all that often, Not but often enough to make you wonder why the hell these issues are here to begin with. 16-ish years later on newish hardware. That's insane to me, but performance hasn't been a deterrent to keep me from playing this game, as it is still very enjoyable. However, while I might be a little bit early into the game, in order to make such a bold claim, I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. But this is what I could call a pretty lazy port, and the reasons for this are the following. Like I mentioned earlier, performance is not consistent and struggles to run fine at all times, which should not be a problem today with a game this old. Also, it's very difficult to miss which DLC character you end up having in the game. For instance, since you can't have Raidou and Dante at the same time, I wanted Dante, but somehow I ended up with Raidou instead. I haven't obtained him yet, but you do see a cutscene with him in it, and that's when you know that you're locked to Raidou. I still have no idea how I messed up this aspect exactly. And the music sounds pretty compressed when you listen to it, at least Nocturne's original soundtrack, 
I have no idea why they put PlayStation 2 music here when they did not need to. Or guess these tracks at their original quality are available out there, but they excluded it from the game. I noticed that the music sounded odd from the start, which is a shame considering how good the music actually is. And as I mentioned earlier, some important cutscenes are in 4x3, which is very immersion breaking if you're, if you're transitioning between both aspect ratios, especially early on. I find it hard to believe that they didn't have the original assets and files to render this scene in 16x9. And as of now, I'm still pretty happy playing the game, but I feel like that's the case because it's my first time playing it. I think that the game is great, has a very compelling story, and is a ton of fun. But the port or the remaster simply isn't what it should have been. And while I don't necessarily worry about how Shin Megami Tensei 5 will turn out later on, it does make me wonder if Atlas still cares enough about mainline SMT, or if it is all about Persona now, with SMT being a side project. My point is that they could have done better with this port. Absolutely, and it shouldn't have been delivered in the way that it was. But because this is the only way of playing it unless you have a PlayStation 2 or want to emulate it, then this is still the way to experience Nocturne. I don't regret getting it on Switch because the Switch version is still just fine enough that I can enjoy Nocturne. So far, I'm still inclined to recommend it for new players, but I won't blame you if you decide to emulate it or something like that, if I'm completely honest with you. This game doesn't exactly make a great case for not doing so, but, but make no mistake, I'm not recommending that you do so, since there is a playable, modern way of enjoying the game, and that's how I would primarily rec recommend that you get access to it. And I hope that you've enjoyed this review, and if you liked it, then leave me a like and comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the full review when that's out. And I will be seeing you all next time. Enjoy.